Hello, and welcome to our webinar on how to perform a Dexcom sensor insertion. My name is Michelle. I'm a certified diabetes educator here at Dexcom. And today I'm going to be describing or demonstrating for you how you'll insert that Dexcom sensor onto your skin. So we want to start by discussing the two different types of adhesive or medical glue that you have the option of using on your skin prior to placement of the sensor. So you can use a medical glue called skin tack or mastisol on your skin before you put that sensor on. Now the two different types of medical glue that you can use, the skin tack and mastisol, you do want to make sure that you apply them to the skin correctly, meaning you want to apply them in what we call a donut fashion, which means you would apply it in an oblong oval shape and then leave the center of that oval exposed without any overlying medical glue. So that way when you place the sensor pod on top of it, that sensor needle or wire will just puncture through your skin and it will not come into contact with any of that overlying medical glue. If you do choose to use these types of medical glue, make sure you let it dry on your skin for about 45 seconds to a minute. That will allow the glue to get very sticky and tacky and adhere to that sensor pod very well. Now these medical glues are a little challenging to find at a local drugstore or pharmacy. So if you do choose to use them, you would probably want to order them online. But again, they are optional. You don't necessarily have to use these medical glues, you know, prior to placement of the sensor. So we're going to review the sensor applicator or the device you're going to use to apply the sensor to your skin. You know, we're going to spend some time discussing the parts of that sensor applicator so that way when I demonstrate a sensor insertion for you, it will make a little more sense. Now this picture here, it is color coded for teaching purposes, but your sensor applicator in reality will be sort of a generalized clear purplish color. The first part I want to point out to you is called the safety lock, labeled here in green. And the safety lock serves two purposes. The one purpose is it's there to prevent you from accidentally pressing down on the plunger before you should. So when you are ready to press down on that plunger, you'll remove that safety lock from the applicator barrel, place that safety lock in a safe spot, because you can use that safety lock as a tool at the end of the seven day sensor session to help you remove the transmitter from the sensor pod. So that way you can continue to reuse that transmitter with each subsequent sensor insertion. Now the plunger labeled here in turquoise, when you depress down on that with your thumb, that will insert the needle into your skin with the sensor wire inside of it. Now you obviously don't want a sharp, rigid needle sitting in your skin for the full seven days, so you will want to remove that needle from your skin, and you'll do that with the collar labeled here in yellow. You're going to retract that collar or move the collar from the very bottom of the applicator barrel to the very top of the applicator barrel, and that will remove that needle from your skin so it just leaves a nice, thin, flexible sensor wire inside of your skin. Now you also want to be very careful as to where you place your fingers in relation to that collar during the insertion. You want to keep your fingers above the collar when you depress down on the plunger with your thumb. That's very important because your natural instinct will be to want to, you know, put your fingers below that collar initially. And if you do that, you will almost certainly retract that collar before you should. And that will remove that needle from your skin before it's been fully inserted. And that could lead to a sensor failure. So be very cognizant of your finger placement in relation to that collar. You know, keep your fingers above the collar when you press down on the plunger and then move your fingers below the collar to retract that collar to the top of the applicator barrel. Once you've done that, you're going to remove the applicator barrel from the sensor pod. And you can do that with the release tabs labeled there in fuchsia. They feel like little ridged tabs on each side of the sensor pod. And you're going to pinch those release tabs together and that will release that applicator barrel from that sensor pod. At that point, you do want to insert the transmitter into your sensor pod, and you'll do that with that purple transmitter latch there on the back. Now you want to make sure that you pick a good spot to place your sensor. So if you're an adult patient, you know, over the age of 18, you can place the sensor on your abdomen. If you're a pediatric patient under the age of 18, you have the option of using not only your abdomen, but you can also use your upper buttocks as well. 
Now, if you're on an insulin pump, make sure you pick a site that is at least three inches away from your infusion set for your pump. If you administer insulin injections, you know, just be aware that wherever you place that sensor, you do want to perform your insulin injections at least three inches away from that sensor site. So now I'm going to demonstrate for you how to perform that sensor insertion. So once you found a good spot on your skin, you know, make sure you thoroughly clean it off with an alcohol pad and scrub your skin pretty well to remove any dead skin cells or oils that could be on your skin that might interfere with that sensor from sticking. And then make sure you let that alcohol completely dry. If you are using SkinTac or Mastisol, you would want to apply it to your skin at that point. And then you would take your sensor applicator, and I know that mine is already attached to a, a demo skin here, but normally the back of your white adhesive here, it has a white piece of paper on the back or this white adhesive backing that you would want to peel off. And then just stick that sensor pod on your skin horizontally or side to side like this. And then you want to really make sure that you press down on the adhesive with your fingers really, really hard because that adhesive on the sensor pod is pressure activated. So the firmer you press down on that adhesive with your fingers, you know, the better it will stick to your skin. At that point, you're going to remove the safety lock from the sensor applicator. So the safety lock is this piece right here. You just grab onto it and with your other hand on the applicator barrel to kind of secure it in place, you pull or uh, just kind of uh, pull that safety lock out and away from the applicator barrel. And again, put that safety lock in a safe spot so that you can use that safety lock in the future to help you remove the transmitter from the sensor pod. Now this is where you wanna be careful as to where you place your fingers. So this piece here is called the collar. It looks like a circular rim that sticks out. This is the piece where you really wanna make sure that you keep your fingers above it. So you're gonna place your index finger and middle finger above that collar and your thumb on top of the plunger. And then your other hand um, is going to pinch up on your skin in front of the sensor pod. Now again, keep your fingers above the collar because your natural instinct is gonna to wanna to be to put your fingers below that collar like an injection. Make sure you don't do that. So keep your fingers above the collar, your thumb on top of the plunger, pinch up on your skin in front of that sensor pod, and then you will press down on that plunger with your thumb until you hear two clicks. That will insert the needle into your skin. You can let go of your skin, but then continue to keep your thumb on top of the plunger and now move your two fingers below the collar. And then you'll glide that collar all the way to the top of the applicator barrel until you hear two clicks. You then need to remove this applicator barrel from the sensor pod. So you'll take your thumb and index finger and feel for these release tabs, these little ridge tabs on each side. They're a little hard to see. You can feel them better than you can see them. But you'll take your thumb and index finger, grip onto them and pinch them pretty hard. And then with your other hand on the applicator barrel, just rock that applicator barrel out and away from your skin so that it just leaves that sensor pod and transmitter latch still attached. At that point, you'll want to insert the transmitter into your sensor pod. So you'll take your transmitter and you want to clean the back of the transmitter with an alcohol pad. You'll notice that there's a narrow end that says G5, or yours might even say G4, with these two little gray teeth that stick out. You want to insert that side of the transmitter into the sensor pod first, and you specifically want to insert it on the side opposite of the transmitter latch. So if this is the sensor pod on your skin, you know, you've got your transmitter latch right here. You would take your transmitter and insert that G5 end in first on the side opposite of the latch. Let me show you another angle here because you do sort of angle in that transmitter. So you would insert that transmitter into that sensor pod on the side opposite of the latch, then just lie that transmitter down so it's resting right on top of that sensor pod. And it's not clicked into place yet, so you hold it in place with your fingers, and then you grab onto this transmitter latch, pull the latch towards the transmitter, 
pull it really, really hard until you hear two separate clicks. You then want to remove this transmitter latch. So you'll grab onto it and with a motion at your wrist, a twisting motion, you will twist. That will break off the latch so that it just leaves that sensor pod and transmitter on your skin. Now I really want to emphasize the importance of hearing those two clicks when you're pulling on that transmitter latch. Don't be surprised if you feel like you're having to pull very hard on that transmitter latch um, in order to hear those two clicks. Because if you only hear one click, only one side of that transmitter will snap down into that sensor pod and that could lead to error prompts. So let me show you what that would look like, or what it would look like if you only heard one click when you were pulling on that transmitter latch. If you looked at the D for Dexcom end of your transmitter, you would see that one side was not snapped down, and it's very, very subtle, but you would see that this side of the transmitter is clicked in, and this side is not. You know, that little gray triangular piece, it's sticking up above that plastic wing or prong of the sensor pod. So if you see that, just press down on that side of the transmitter and that will click it into place. So make sure that both of those little gray triangular pieces are both seated below these plastic wings or prongs of the sensor pod. Even if you think you heard two clicks when you were pulling on that transmitter latch, I still recommend that you visually inspect the back of the transmitter to make sure that it's fully clicked into place. So now we're going to review how to remove that sensor at the end of the seven day sensor session. So your sensor pod is good on your skin for seven days. So if you insert the sensor, for example, on a Monday, you'll be due to change out your sensor the following Monday. So to remove that sensor from your skin, you're simply just going to peel that sensor pod off your skin like a Band-Aid with the transmitter still attached to that sensor pod. And then you need to remove that transmitter from the sensor pod so that you can discard that sensor pod and reuse that transmitter. Now there are two ways that you can remove the transmitter from the pod. The one way is with the use of a safety lock and the other way is with your fingers. So if you're using the safety lock method, you would want to grab your safety lock and you'll notice that there's a little U-shaped cutout in the safety lock. You would use that to, uh, to wrap around the wide end of the transmitter and remove that transmitter from the pod. So let me show you what that would look like. You would want to make sure you also place that sensor pod and transmitter on a hard surface in order to get this method to work. So if you look at the D for Dexcom end or the wide end of your transmitter, that's the side that you would want to place that uh, safety lock onto. So you would wrap that U-shaped cutout around the wide end of your transmitter. Let me show you a, a few different angles here because that safety lock would need to be perpendicular to that transmitter. You would then apply some downward pressure on that safety lock, and it's a little hard to show you if I'm not on a hard surface, but I can assure you if you are on a hard surface and you apply some downward pressure on that safety lock, and then you pull up on that safety lock, that will take that transmitter out of the pod so that you can discard that sensor pod and reuse your transmitter. Now, if you wanna use the method with your fingers, let me show you how you would do that. You would again focus in on the D for Dexcom end or the wide end of your transmitter. You would notice again that there's those two plastic wings or prongs that are sort of holding or hugging that transmitter in place. So you would grip onto those plastic prongs, let's say with your two index fingers, and simultaneously just pull those plastic arms or prongs out and away from the transmitter at the same time and that would take the transmitter out of that pod, and then again, you could discard that pod and reuse your transmitter. So if you're on a Dexcom G4 system, your transmitter has a warranty or a battery life of six months. If you're on a Dexcom G5 system, your transmitter has a battery life or warranty of three months. So make sure you don't throw away that transmitter. You do wanna reuse it with your subsequent sensor insertions. Great, so that completes our webinar for today. Thank you for joining us. 
We do encourage you to check our website for other webinars that we offer. And I'm part of the patient care department. We're a group of certified diabetes educators here to help you answer your questions or help you set up your system, help you perform your first sensor insertion or any subsequent sensor insertions. So if you have any questions or you need any help, you know, please reach out to us. Our phone number is listed here along with our hours. Um, so again, if you need anything at all, don't hesitate to reach out. And thank you again for joining our webinar.